What's up guys, this is the Gospel According to Mark with a C. He is I and I am he. Just taking some time to tell you exactly what's on my mind. Thank you for joining me once again, my friends. I hope all is well with you. Now guys, Star Wars. Star Wars is the tie that binds us all. No matter what we talk about, no matter what the wide range of topics we talk about, we all have this base love for Star Wars that brought us all together in this particular space. And of course, some of you might have found my channel through Star Wars. I don't really talk about it too much these days because let's face it, Star Wars is now trash. And I gave up on Star Wars probably after Kenobi. All right, I was probably through with it before then, but let's face it, Kenobi, you wanted to see Ewan McGregor, you wanted to see Hayden Christensen. And I was telling myself at that time, this, this is it. If they can't make Star Wars work, getting back Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen, they're not going to make anything work. And although Kenobi brought us the historic, impactful character of the show was trash. And after that, I was done. Life is too short, guys. You've heard me talk about this before. Every day brings us closer to our not being here and I'm not going to waste time watching something that I know is crap. I know that Star Wars can be great to me. Now of course Star Wars is not universally loved. There are some people who love the prequels who hate the originals. They love the originals but hate the prequels. They love the sequels. I don't know why but okay. I respect all of that. I respect your right to love what you love. However, just like you have to admit guys what they've been coming up with in um, Lucasfilm lately for Star Wars is just objectively bad. And I think the majority of people are really seeing that. It's just, it's not like, it's not as feeling and impactful as it used to be, right? So it's got a lot of people wondering, what are we gonna do? Like, how do you go forward with Star Wars? It's just not doing it for a lot of people and there's no way around this anymore. There's no denying it anymore, okay? There are just too many cooks in the kitchen. So everyone's thinking about where do we go in the future. And we have here a story of one Mr. Dave Filoni. Who has been asked. Uh, they were, they're asking him about the possibility of get this. In R rated Star Wars. In R rated Star Wars. What could possibly go. They can't even get a PG-13 decent Star Wars. Imagine an R-rated Star Wars, okay? There's so many different things I find that's wrong with that. But let's just get into this. This was on CBR.com. And I want to read to you um, some of this. And then I'm going to give you my thoughts. And then you give me your thoughts. That's the way it works. And it says here, it's interesting. Dave Filoni addresses the possibility of R-rated Star Wars movies. <laughs> Good Lord Almighty, could you imagine? The power of one. The power of two. The power of many. Get the hell out of here. In an R-rated version, it says, An R-rated Star Wars movie remains a possibility at Lucasfilm. Dave Filoni, who is the chief creative officer at the company, recently explained why he is exploring, or why he is open to exploring Star Wars across all film ratings. While speaking with Josh Horowitz, on the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast, Filoni was asked about the possibility of an R-rated project in the Star Wars galaxy. And he says, Sure, I mean, I don't know. It's interesting, he said. The bottom line is, whatever we do, it has to be really well done. <laughs> Why start now? Now you're saying it really has to be well done? Now you have these standards? Bro, oh, it's a miracle. It says, uh, when, oh no, he goes on to say, when you look at something that's taken as different, like Andor, it's so well done. I think there's an audience for that. I also think with that audience, I still want to be hitting the imagination of kids out there so they can grow up and appreciate those things. <laughs> so he wants, uh, an R-rated Star Wars that also is hitting the imagination of kids. Dave Filoni, bro, you can't have an R rate. It's it's R rated for a reason. It's restricted. That's what it means. Did you not know that? You cannot have an R rated anything for kids. And if you do, there's a G word that might apply to you, my friend. Tread carefully. He goes on to say, 
Uh, he went on to explain how important it is for Star Wars creatives to infuse their own unique voices into their projects, noting that nobody wants to watch a movie or show that feels like it's trying to mimic the franchise's creator, George Lucas. Ah, stop! Speak for yourself. I would love for George Lucas to be the blueprint for what you're doing. It's not trying to be like George Lucas that's gotten you into this. And Dave Filoni goes on to say, I think that it encompasses all types of styles and the creatives of these particular stories driving it is kind of the most important thing. They should do something that's within their comfort zone, Filoni shared. Otherwise, just imagine that everyone's going to come and pretend that they're George Lucas and they're not. We need to be exploring the power of many. Basically, it's what he's saying. No, my friend. This is where you continue to go wrong, my friend. I cannot comprehend why it is so impossible for you guys to understand why you keep going zoom off the tracks time and time again. You don't get it. We love Star Wars because we love George Lucas's vision, man. It doesn't mean that you have to think that you're George Lucas. That man is a visionary, okay? He did what he did, but you need to adhere to the universe that he created, the rules that he created. When you say, may the force be with you, why the hell would we be talking about thread? We're not talking about sewing, knit one. Pearl 2, knit 1, Pearl 2, no, get the freak back in your lane. It's about the Force. I've heard people try to explain this away. Well, it's different areas of the galaxy. They might call the Force different things in different places. The Jedi are supposed to be a legendary. The Force is in that galaxy, okay? It surrounds us. It binds us. You don't get to rename it. You don't get to just call it yourself. Call it whatever you want to call it. It's like Ray. It's like Ray's just standing up somewhere and just deciding, I want to be Ray Skywalker. You're Ray Palpatine. You don't get to bend reality to where you want it to be. See, this is that slick type of stuff where as long as you identify as something, you can be whatever you want to be. If you're a boy and you identify as a girl, you could be that. This is that same energy. No, there are rules in the galaxy. If it's the force, it's the freaking force. People need to stop. Stop enabling this nonsense. Let's see if there's anything else here. This bullshit. It says here, uh, where is it? Although shows like The Mandalorian and Andor have explored more mature content. In it, get the fuck out. No, they haven't. No, they haven't. It's all fluff. There has been nothing of consequence that's come from Disney Star Wars. Nothing. It's all disposable, man. It's all disposable. All right. You need to get back to good old fashioned storytelling. Good versus evil. No, the Jedi are not the bad guy. Stop with the BS. Okay. Stop it. Stop tinkering. Stop giving it to people who have their own agendas. And then maybe when the people see that the passion has returned, when people see that the leadership is steady, when people see that there's a commitment to entertainment before the commitment to your politics, before the commitment to your whims and your passions and things like that, your own individual things, then maybe you'll get that respect. Maybe we need to have Dave Filoni step down. Maybe we need to have Kathleen Kennedy step down. Just maybe, maybe you might want to think about that. Disney Lucasfilm, if you actually want to get the people to come back, if you actually want to get the people back in the theme parks in a way that's just monumental, all right? There's a lot of passion in the fandom, you know? There's a lot of diversity in the fandom. And this is what we're attracted to. It doesn't matter about you checking boxes on a screen. It matters about those central themes, those basic themes that we all love, no matter who we are. This is what we share. This is the reason why people come together for these things. But you notice what's been going on? People are apart right now. This is what you've done, Kathleen Kennedy. This is what you've done, Dave Filoni. This is what you've done, Ryan Johnson. This is what you've done, J.J. Abrams. This is what you've all done. You've destroyed this thing. You've ruined it. I love Star Wars. I'm still wearing the shirt in 2024. Go figure. Because I love Star Wars. The real Star Wars. And there's always going to be a part of me that hopes that it comes back. So I can share this with my grandkids. And they can share it with their kids. You know, when these people are born. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, this is what we all want. We don't want what you've been giving us. 
So why don't you read the room and wise up? And when you're talking about R-rated Star Wars, you know, I got two words for you. Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder tried R-rated Star Wars. How did that work? How's that working for Zack Snyder? Rebel Moon. How's that working? Star Wars is supposed to be for the kid in all of us. We talk about who Star Wars is for. George Lucas said, I think he said it was for uh, 12 year olds, 12 year old boys, perhaps 12 year olds. And people took that to mean that it's only for children. And I always said what that really means. It's like when you go to Ringling Brothers Barnum Bailey Circus and when he says, uh, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, children of all ages, Star Wars can appeal to the child in you and the child in me, the children of all ages. You should be 100 and still love Star Wars. And there's no shame in that. But this is a concept that people have such a hard time understanding. This is what we want. We want to feel like kids again. We want to feel that sense of adventure, even though the odds are impossible. When Han Solo says, don't tell me the odds. Never tell me the odds. That's how we feel. Never tell us the odds. Never tell us the reality. This is escapist fantasy fun. Fuck your R-rated Star Wars. That is not what we want. Dave, Dave Filoni, kiss my ass again and again and again. I'm tired of this. Get a hint. Get a clue. Fix it. And if you can't, well then... Drive it into the ground. Either way, it is what it is. I'm out anyway. All right, guys. That was just a little bit of a, I guess, an old-fashioned OG type of rant. I haven't done one of those in a while. But um, you can get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this in R-rated Star Wars. I know we love, we're just enamored with everything being dark. That is not Star Wars. Star Wars is family. Star Wars is for the kid in all of us. Star Wars is silly. Star Wars is adventurous. It's fun. It's wild. It's romantic. It's all of these things. If you're not showing me that, if you just want to be R-rated just to be R-rated, you know, if you want to be gratuitous like that, then you go on and do that. I mean, you've already messed with the corpse of Star Wars long enough. Anyway, guys, get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this. Would you like to see an R-rated Star Wars? Do you feel what I'm saying? Do you understand any of that? Um, let me know how you feel about this. As always, guys, you can like, you can share, you can subscribe. You can hit that Super Thanks feature uh, on e each one of my videos if you want to contribute to the channel. I do appreciate you guys. I will catch you on the next one. This is The Gospel According to Mark with a C. Rock on.